Hey, it's just so great to be with you here at Terra Nova. Whether you're here in person or online, just wanted to welcome you and thank you so much for being here. I want to let you know that as we gather together, we're going to be doing some things together that the uh, church has been doing uh, for centuries and centuries. Followers of Jesus have been doing these practices. One is going to be a communion. That's going to be a little later on uh, 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 during our time. And then the other is um, something that... Um, we get to do together, and that is actually a saying scripture together. We've been in this series called Songs of the Summer. It's about the book of Psalms, and we know that many of the Psalms that we read in the Old Testament are ones that were sung, but we also know that uh, for centuries that uh, followers of Jesus have been getting together and have been saying these words together out loud. And, and I think that how this works is that when we're together as a community and we're speaking them audibly is there's a way of that truth uh, really getting driven into our hearts. And so one of the Psalms uh, that, uh, that we love to do, we've been doing this all series long, um, is this Psalm that we're going to be saying together. It's Psalm 25. Uh, and I think that the words are really powerful. I think you'll agree with me. And so I would love for us to say this together out loud. Ready on the count of three? One, two, three. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. And that's a great thing to ask God for, isn't it? Is for God to show us the way and the path because, you know, in our lives we're looking for guidance, we're looking for leadership, and we are uh, trusting that God knows the way, the, the path for our lives. And, and so this next song is a song that speaks about that. We've said this psalm together, but now uh, let's go ahead and sing the truth of this psalm as the band leads us.
on, sing it out. Whatever it costs me, all I want is you. Jesus, all I want is you. Wherever you lead me, whatever it costs me, all I want is you. Jesus, all I truth to internalize, and so I hope that is encouraging to you uh, as, as we're singing that and as we're uh, just kind of embracing that this evening. Well, I want to say welcome, everybody. It's good to see you all here, and uh, if you're watching online, thanks for joining us. My name is Scott, and before you guys take a seat, we want to give you a chance just to interact with some of the people around, and so uh, in just a second, you can say hi to a couple people, but when you do that, uh, go ahead and ask them this question. So uh, today we had a group of Terranovans that were out at the beach doing uh, just this great opportunity. We had Voice of the Refugees Beach Blast, which was a ton of fun. I uh, got to bring the kids to that. But as you're meeting some people right now, go ahead and introduce yourself. Ask them their name and then ask them, hey, how often do you get to the beach? And some people will say, oh, maybe once a year. And there are people in this room who will say, you know what, multiple times every single week, sometimes multiple times a day. Okay, so go ahead, say hi, introduce yourself, talk to some people and ask them that question. Again, I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us at Terranova this weekend. It is great to have you here. My name is Scott, and uh, man, I hope you're having a great Saturday. What a, a beautiful and warm day it has been. But you made it here, and we are glad that you're with us. We're going to have a great time celebrating this weekend. And as Lyle mentioned a little bit earlier, we're going to be celebrating communion. And so if you didn't get a chance to grab the elements that we've got on the way in, uh, you can either do that right now or you'll see them. We've got tables to the sides or you can grab them a little bit uh, later on or whenever you're ready to do that. But we're going to be celebrating communion and we're also going to be diving into the finale of our series called Songs of the Summer, where we've been looking at the Psalms. And so uh, that's coming up. But we are just, again, glad you're here. If you happen to be a guest or this is one of your first times around Terranova, we just always say we are especially grateful that you would spend some time with us. And we hope you have just a really encouraging and helpful experience where you find all the things that we're doing, uh, just something that resonates with, with your life and, and just the truth that God has for us. And so thanks so much, everybody, for being here with us. And uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of talk through a few things that we've got coming up. And I'm going to use this program that we have kind of as our guide to go through things. So if you've got a program, you can go ahead and pull it out and follow through uh, as we're going through some of the things. If you've got the Terranova app, you can use that as well. But one of the first things that, uh, that I'm gonna talk about that we always talk about each and every week is what we have, uh, it's kind of the back flap of this program, and it's what we call our Connect card. So if you've got a program, you can find your Connect card, fold it over a couple times, and then tear it off and to begin to fill it out. And uh, you can use that front side kind of for the vitals and basic info information about yourself. But the back side is where we just love to hear from you about how you're doing, anything we could be praying about for you, questions you might have, comments, maybe something you like to talk with somebody about. And so that space is yours. So feel free to use that with, with whatever uh, information or things that you wanna let us know about. But we love to get a Connect card from everybody every single week. And so if you love just to uh, spend a little bit of time doing that, that would be awesome. You can also find the Connect card on the Terranova app as well. But as you're filling that out, I wanted to let you know about a couple things that we've got coming up that are really gonna make next weekend around Terranova a great weekend. And uh, the first thing, and you'll find this within your program, is that we're kicking off 
a, a series that's called God on Film. This is a series we've done for a number of years. And this year, we're going to be looking at some of like the most classic movies. And I'm excited uh, for what we've got in store with that. But here's what makes the uh, series a little bit of extra fun is because we just kind of find this reason to go, you know what? This is a great opportunity to give away free movie tickets. And people seem to enjoy when they get free stuff, especially movie tickets. And so for the, for the duration of the series and what we're going to be doing is anytime that you bring a guest, both you and your guests are going to get a free movie ticket. And you can do that any single week of the series. But it's just another reason to go, hey, you know what? If there are people in our lives that we say, you know, I think they might enjoy what we're doing around here, then you've got another option to say, hey, you should come with me and there's something in it for you as well. And so that's coming up next weekend where we're going to be kicking off God on Film uh, with the movie tickets and all of that. Uh, in a couple weekends, what we're going to be doing is we've got a family movie night that we're doing after the Saturday night service where we're going to be showing the movie we're talking about uh, in our high school room. And then we're going to have like this hot dog barbecue that's going to be outside. A lot of fun, whether you've got little ones, you've got a family, or you just want to come out solo. Uh, it's going to be a great time for that. But that's coming up in a couple weekends. But another reason why uh, next weekend is special around Terra Nova is that on Saturday night, we're going to be moving our Saturday night service time back to the original slot. So our Saturday night service right now, it's meeting at 6 o'clock. And then we're going to be back to our normal 5 o'clock time beginning next weekend. And so that means it's just a great time for you to be able to come to service, go get dinner afterwards, hang out from, with some friends, maybe some of the friends that you brought with you uh, for the series. And so we're excited for that. But don't come next Saturday at 6 o'clock or else it'll be like a five to 10 minute service, okay? So come at five o'clock and uh, we're gonna be jumping back into that next week. But again, got on film, movie tickets, bring some friends. 6 p.m. service is moving to five o'clock next Saturday. Uh, and that's all coming up. But this weekend and right now, we're gonna dive into the finale of our series that we've been going through the Psalms. It's called Songs of the Summer. So let's go ahead and check it out. So have you ever noticed that uh, as you live your life, that uh, the, the things that you want in life, you know, like the things that you really want, is that they, they tend to, to, to change. Now, now, previously in our series, John Reed walked us through uh, Psalm 57, and, uh, and he challenged us with this question. The question is just, what do you want? Simple question, right? Simple question. Uh, but the answer to that question probably depends on kind of the season of life that you're in. So when you were young, maybe you wanted a puppy. How many puppy people do we have here? Okay, you love dogs, so yeah, you're, you still want a dog, right? Uh, but then after a while, you might have graduated from the puppy to the pony, right? So who, who here ever wanted a pony? That's what you wanted, you, like you're the horse people. There you are. You know, you wanted a, a pony, you know, you wanted a horse, right? But, but then after a while, life began to change and that you were craving something with a little bit more horsepower. So you wanted a car. Car people, raise your hand if you're a car person. We've got the car people that are here. And, and you know that when you're looking for a car, you're not looking for just any ordinary car, right? It, it's it's got to be something special. Maybe you're looking for a convertible or a 4x4 four four, or a 4x4 four four convertible. All right? And you're just out there looking, looking, because you know what you want? What you really, really want is that you want a cool car. Uh, but then there's a whole different category of things that as you live your life that, uh, that fall into this category of things that you know that will take a tremendous effort for you to get. Like six-pack abs. Right? I mean, six-pack abs, if you had them, you know, like you'd go to the beach a lot more, right? You know, not just the few times that you mentioned. But, you know, and if you had six-pack abs, when it was time to play pickup basketball shirts and skins, you'd go skins no problem. Now, now I wanted six-pack abs. I began to work towards six-pack abs once upon a time. I got this close to ripping these guys out. And, and then I uh, found that I hit this brick wall. And the brick wall was like a math problem that dealt with, uh, with the exponential increase of crunches plus the exponential decrease of calories. And I had to throw in the towel, man, I, 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 had, I had to quit. I had to quit. And so, and so lately, lately, you know, I've, I've been thinking about what it is that I really want in the category that John 
uh, challenged us with last week. We, we, he, he said this. He says, here's the challenge. He says, the challenge when it comes to what we want is to desire the biggest, best, and most important things because, because life is really too short to settle for anything less. And the reason that we want to focus ourselves in this way, the reason is this, is that what we want the most will set the course and character of our lives. And so this is a really big deal. This is a, a, a really big thing. And so, so, so for myself, and, uh, and also I know that this will impact the other people around me, is that here's what I've been wanting recently. I'm going to talk to you about what I want. Okay, so are you ready for it, what I want? Drum roll, please. Ready? I want to become emotionally healthy. I want to be an emotionally healthy person. And, and I want to define that uh, to you tonight by rolling out, first of all, what it is not. And so, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what emotionally unhealthy looks like. It, it's when you're moody or constantly angry, or very controlling, or easily offended, or grudge-carrying, or, you know, passive-aggressive, you know, it's like you're never really quite sure, you know, what this, you're going to get from this person, or resentful, or you're good at giving people the silent treatment, you know, the it, avoid and withdraw thing. That's what emotionally unhealthy looks like. Now let's go ahead and flip it. Let's take a look at what emotionally healthy looks like. It would look like a life full of love and joy and peace, and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. And, and as you notice, this is not an original list that I made up, right? This comes straight from the New Testament in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, where the Apostle Paul says, guys, guys, this is what it looks like to live a spirit-controlled life, a life filled with God's Holy Spirit. These are the things that pour out of a person's life uh, this is what a Christian, a follower of Christ, is supposed to look like and supposed to be about, all about. And, and have you noticed that this list looks like an incredibly healthy uh, batch uh, of, of emotions? Uh, so, so let me ask you, you know, between those two, you know, which would be the better life, okay? Uh, uh, which would be the life that would actually have more kingdom impact, you know, and then people would look at you as a, as a follower of Christ and say, I want that? Uh, which would be the life that would be the better life for the people that are in your life, the people that are, are around you? <laughs> you know the answer. You know the answer. It's to be an emotionally healthy person. Now, 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 here's what I think. Here's what I think. I think that reading the book of Psalms can help you and I become emotionally healthy. I, I, I truly believe that. I think that... Uh, that that, that that can happen, and, and here's the reason why. The reason why is that the, the book of Psalms uh, contain in, uh, in vivid description the full range of emotional experiences. Um, everything from, you know, the, the really uh, dark emotional experiences like anger and, and uh, sorrow and loss and, and grief to, to more positive ones, like ones like joy and gladness and happiness and peace and resolve. Yep, you know what? The Psalms go through every possible emotional experience condition that you can be in. They're all on display. God doesn't hide them. Um, he doesn't ignore them. But instead, what we have here is an entire book of scripture that, uh, that shows how God validates the emotional feelings that we have and then shows us how he's faithful in all of them. And, and so, you know, it's really super easy to, uh, to read the book of Psalms and, and to find consistently Psalms that connect with exactly how you're feeling emotionally. And that's really empowering. And, and that, that's why we've been doing this series. That's why we've invited uh, you all to be a part of this psalm reading plan um, that we rolled out at the very beginning of the summer. It's where uh, you can read all 150 psalms or you can kind of do the greatest hits. Uh, and there's still time for you to jump into that reading program. If you haven't done so already, you can find it on your app. You can find it on the website. It's been great. I've been doing it totally enjoying it. And, and so here's the thing, is that I believe that in doing that, in, in exploring the Psalms, is that we, you and I, can actually benefit from it by being more emotionally healthy. And, and, and I think that even our time today, our time today can take us one step closer to being emotionally healthy. 
And, uh, and so, so each of the 150 psalms has this promise, but in the psalm that we're going to look at today, Psalm 73, uh, I think that it's uh, a, a psalm that it's kind of in a different class than the others because this psalm is going to reveal to us the greatest threat to our emotional well-being and then what we do about it. So let's take a look at Psalm chapter 73. If you brought a copy of the scriptures, you can go ahead and turn there, or, or you can pull those message notes out. Uh, they're provided if you're looking online. Um, you can go ahead and use that Terranova app as well, and that uh, the scriptures are there printed for you. But uh, let's, we'll go ahead and begin with Psalm 73. It is a psalm of Asaph. Now, it's not the psalm of David uh, in our series so far up to this point, is that we've been looking at psalms that have all been penned by a guy named David, or sometimes known as King David. But Asaph was one of David's songwriters. The Old Testament tells us that he's one of three people that were like professional musicians in his royal court. Now, the, uh, the name Asaph actually means gatherer uh, or collector, and, and so it's possible that the name Asaph was not his real name. It might have been a pen name or uh, what we call um, a, 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 um, a, a you know, kind of a ghostwriter thing. Um, it, and so um, uh, it, it might have been a, a used... Uh, uh, ascribed to him because he was good at taking things that are, are true and, uh, and things that are right and then just had a knack for being able to put them to song. And so here we go, Psalm 73. Let's t- go ahead and take a look at the first verse. Verse 1, it says this. He says, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Have you ever had somebody in your life, you know, kind of tell you all the time, Hey man, God is good. God is good. Maybe that's where they got that. But see, this is actually a pretty good place to start for emotional health. Uh, because, you know, this idea that there is a God and that he is good, you know, that's a plus, right? But now Asaph, he's going to begin to talk about some things that he sees that's going to put all of this into question. Let's look at the next verse. He says this. He says, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I nearly lost my footing. You know, when it came to this God is good stuff, he says, I almost lost my faith in that. I, I almost lost my faith in God and his goodness. And I came this close to, to just quitting the program and ditching it all. And here's the reason why the next verse, verse three. He says, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And so here it is. Here it is, the obstacle that I told you about, the greatest threat, I believe, uh, to being emotionally healthy, it's, it's, this, it's this word right here. He says, I envied. The greatest threat is envy. Uh, or sometimes we call it jealousy. He became envious, and he saw the prosperity of people getting ahead, and, and a, the type of person that he saw getting ahead was a person he identifies as the wicked. All right, now that sounds pretty harsh, right? Pretty judgmental. So like, who are the wicked? Well, Scripture is always really clear about spiritual realities. Scripture tells us that that there is a thing called God's righteousness and that there are people that, that have bought into that. And then there's also real evil in the world and there are people that have bought in to that. And so there's another way of saying that is that there are some people that have bought in to living a Godward life, and then there are people that have bought in to living a self-centered life. And he's saying those are the wicked, the ones that have bought into living a self-centered life. And then Asaph says, and with these wicked people, look at how they're doing. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. For their callous hearts come iniquity and their evil imaginations have no limits. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is uh, amazing, he says. And then the next thing is that he says that they scoff and speak with malice. With arrogance, they threaten oppression. So, you know, they're very intimidating people. And not only that, verse 9 says, their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possessions of the earth. And so he's saying is that that these people say whatever they want, whenever they want, wherever they want, 
And because of that is that they have influence. They're influencers. With this, verse 10, is that it says, therefore, their people, yep, they've got a crowd, they've got a fan base, they've got a following. Their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. And so you see what's going on here, what's, what's happening is uh, that people are just lapping up their words. People are just lapping up their worldview. And, and, and because of that, they say, they say this, they say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? It's their way of saying, this God talk is useless. It's nonsense. So, so this is what the wicked are like. Always free of care, they go on amassing wealth. And Asaph says, and I envied them for it. I mean, do you see how powerful envy was back in those ancient times? And, and now we think about today, we take it into our today. And envy, I would say, is much more powerful today. And here's the reason why. It's because a few years ago is that part of the human experience when we invented uh, was this thing that is like jet fuel for envy. You know what it's called? Media. Social media. It's like jet fuel for, for, for envy. And, and we know why it is because social media and, it, and its most common forms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, gives us this highlight reel, you know, for people um, all around us that show us their accomplishments, their conquests, their awards, you know, the truck they just bought, the vacations that they went on, the restaurants that they ate at, and the dishes that they ate. And it shows them always trending up and nothing going wrong. And, you know, many of us, many of us thought that when social media really began to catch fire about a decade ago is that it would make our life better. But now that it's been around a while is that the research is now coming in, and it's very clear is that the more social media we consume, the less happy we are. So, so a lot of social scientists have been uh, coming up uh, with a research. Uh, one such social scientist is a uh, professor named Dr. Derek Wirtz. He's a uh, professor of psychology at the University of British uh, Columbia. I did this uh, search, this kind of national search that dealt with uh, the uses of social media and what he calls well-being or what we would call happiness. And uh, in his uh, uh, survey and his research, he's come to these uh, conclusions. He says this. He says, our research shows when participants reported comparing themselves to others while using social media, the less subjective well-being they subsequently experienced. All right, now he's going to go ahead and phrase it another way. He's going to say, the present study demonstrates that ordinary day-to-day -day use of social network sites adversely impacts subjective well-being over time. Now, what I want you to uh, focus on is this ordinary day-to-day. -day. So he's not talking about extraordinary here. He's just talking about ordinary. He's not talking about, you know, the 13-year-old middle schooler with an iPhone and unlimited data. Okay, not talking about that. He's talking about just what is normal for you and I in our social media consumption. He says, it is affecting our happiness. It is affecting our well-being. Now, now, how does Asaph seem to be doing with his well-being? Not, not so hot, right? Uh, I mean, he's not so happy here, is he? And, and, and it's weird because, because the observations that he's making, are they accurate? I, I don't think so. But, but you see, he's just reporting to us about what uh, things seem to look like to him, the way things appear to be to him. I mean, is it reality? You know, that the wicked get all the goodies, you know, and those that live a Godward life are poor and broke and miserable. No, not at all. And, and you know, Jesus actually said something about this. In, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, and in a place that is commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount, is that Jesus said this simply. He said, he said the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And so Jesus' point is this. He says, you know, when there's a storm that's coming in life, is, uh, here's what happens. That storm does not discriminate is that both people are going to get wet, the just and unjust, the righteous, the unrighteous. They're all going to get wet, folks. They're all going to get wet. 
And so that's Jesus' viewpoint, all right? His viewpoint is, is that it's all going to happen. Asaph is saying, you know what? The bad people get good stuff. The good people get, get, uh, get bad stuff. So which viewpoint are we going to go with? I say we go with Jesus' viewpoint, um, his, his viewpoint. And, and so if we just need to understand is that Asaph is not actually seeing things the way that, that things really are. He's seeing things through this lens, and it's the lens of envy and jealousy, which then leads him to another emotionally unhealthy tendency. It's self-pity. Take a look at what he says next. He says, surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. I mean, he's being pretty dramatic, isn't he? All right. A little over the top, you know, uh, because you want to challenge him and say, okay, so Asaph, like all day long, all day long, really, really, all day? I was, oh, yeah, 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 all day. It's like every morning, I mean, not just, you know, three mornings a week, but every morning brings new punishments. Oh, yeah, every morning. It's like, come on, uh, come on. Uh, now, this is what he's thinking. Uh, by the way, it's not what he's saying. Look at the next verse. He says, if I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. So what, what he's saying is that, okay, so this is actually an inner conversation that I'm having. I'm thinking it. I'm not saying it. There are kids around. I don't want to mess up the kids, all right? I don't want to make a bad world for them. But you can see how he's struggling with this. He's trying to understand all this, he says. And when he tried to understand it, it just, it just bummed him out. It troubled him deeply. It sent him to an emotionally dark place. And so his emotions are a wreck. He's not seeing things clearly, but then there's a turning point. But then there's a pivotal moment. He's saying, if I'd spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children when I tried to understand all this. I'm trying to understand it all. It troubled me deeply. And now the turning point, he says, till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood their final destiny. He's saying, I finally got it because I did something. I got, I got into a very important space. He calls it the sanctuary of God, or, or you could call it the house of God, or the tabernacle of God, or the temple of God. It's this space, this place that he's in where the word of God is read and explained and prayers are being offered up and sacrifices are being made and people are connecting deeply with each other and people are connecting deeply with God. It's, it's that kind of gathering. Sometimes we refer to it today as church, as church. And he's saying, you know what? Is This is the thing that was a difference maker for me. I was moving in a really bad way and then suddenly I got redirected because I got with God and I got with his people and I regained perspective because of that. And you know, that's the hope that we have as we gather here at Terranova every single week is that we get a chance to, uh, to gain perspective. Uh, we, we get a chance to, to, to hear from God and, and, uh, and just to come away encouraged and be hopeful. And also you can go ahead and add to the list is that maybe one of the reasons that we should give ourselves in coming to Terra Nova is week after week as we go to Terra Nova, why? So that we can become more emotionally healthy. That'd be kind of a fun thing to say to you, you know, your friends, like, hey, why are you going to the church this weekend? Oh, you know what, I'm going because it just helps you be more emotionally healthy. <laughs> How'd that go? Hopefully it go really good. Now, 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 look, look, that's our hope. And, and, uh, and perhaps it was here in the sanctuary of God is that, that Asaph, comes across a couple of realizations. I, two realizations that I think he comes across. Here's the first one. The first one is this, is that there are painful outcomes for a self-centered life. He says, you know, there's an outcome, there's a destiny for those who live life where their self is at the center, where it's all about you. This is what he says about it in verse 18. He says, surely you place them on slippery ground, you cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors, they're like a dream. When one awakes, when you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. And so what he's saying here is, guys, 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 their lives, their lives have, have no weight. They, they have no substance. They, they have no impact. And then poof, they're gone. And, and, and then he pauses. And, and he thinks back at, 
at the emotionally dark place that he was in just a few moments ago. You know, well, like, you know, it was an envy, it was comparison, it was self-pity. And, and then so he says this, he kind of backtracks a little bit and says, you know, when my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. And, and, and so here he is. It's like he's saying, God, I was such a knucklehead. Uh, you know, I, I was an idiot. It was like, you know, to you, is it, a, it must have been like I was some sort of like brute beast. I was just like so dumb to you. And, and you know what it was? It, it was my heart the whole time. My heart was really in, in a bad place. But, but now in it, there is also a second realization that I think he has when he's in the sanctuary of God. Here's the second one. The second one is, is that there's always provision for a Godward life. There's always provision for a Godward life because look at what happens next. We'll look at what happens next in the next verse. Verse 23, he says, yet, yet. Some English translations render this, nevertheless, nevertheless, I am always with you, God. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel and afterwards you will take me into glory. And then he asks God this question. Here's the question. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. It's powerful, isn't it? Now, we start off our time by talking about what we want. Let's go ahead and end our time by talking about what we need. Because what we want, that's important, but what we need, man, that's essential. That's super important. So, so, so here's, here's what we see uh, in, uh, in terms of what it is that we need in life is that we need God's presence and we need God's guidance and we need God's strength, don't we? I mean, we really need it. We really need it. And think about how that could empower our emotional state. I mean, think of this. Is that how emotionally healthy would you be if you knew that God was there right by your side, walking hand in hand with you through life? I mean, if, if we knew that, if, if we really knew that and, and believed that, I mean, don't you think that that would have a positive impact on our emotional state? Or how about this one? If, if you knew... Um, how emotionally healthy you would be. That when, when you face, you know, the stress and the anxiety of a decision that you need to make is that you always knew is that God was there to guide you, to provide counsel for you so that you know that you could be on the path that God want, wants you to be. How do you think that would impact you emotionally? I mean, how emotionally healthy then would you be too that when there are those times in life when we've all been there when we just feel like we've got nothing left, like we just feel so weak and we can't really move forward and it's here that we realize and understand is that God has strength for us, strength for our heart. He, he's got it all. He's got it all for us is that he is there to provide for us not only just our wants, but really the, the, the needs, the needs that we have in life and that we see how that can fuel ourselves and put us in this place where we're emotionally healthy. Now, you might be thinking, well, um, that's great and everything, uh, so I get it. Uh, Psalm 73, great, Asaph, understand, check, got it. But don't you know that this thing all kind of breaks down when it all hits the fan, right? I mean, you do know that, don't you? I mean, you do know that, you know, when circumstances go bad and everything goes horribly wrong and, you know, things don't play out the way that they should, you know, and, and the, the, those are during those times when God does not seem good and, and he doesn't seem in control. He says, well, what about those times? You know, what, what, what about those times? I mean, how does this stuff, all this stuff work out in real life? Well, I'd like you to see how this psalm, Psalm 73, works out in real life as my friend Holly shares her story. Have a look at the screen. Hi, my name is Holly, and if there's one thing that I've been learning over the last couple of years, it's that God is always in control. And my circumstances will come and go, but He is always here with me. And an example of that is in 2018, uh, we had three kids, six and under, and we were finishing our first year of homeschool. And in March, much to our surprise, we found out that we were pregnant with our fourth. 
and I was uh, shocked to say the least. Then in May, we got a phone call and found out that she had a 90% chance of having Down syndrome. And that really rocked our world. And we thought, Lord, is, is this where you're taking us? And then in July, at an appointment, we saw uh, she had a hole in her heart that may or may not require surgery. And even more importantly, she had a blockage between her stomach and her intestines that definitely required surgery uh, shortly after birth. And it just looked like such a dark tunnel ahead. And I had a choice to make. Really, each piece of information I had a choice to make. Was I going to allow the fear and the worries and the doubts consume me? Because there were so many times I felt like I was drowning. Or was I going to turn around and say, as the psalmist says in Psalm 73, nevertheless, I am continually with you. Lord, you are my counsel. I'm gonna to look to you to be my strength when my body and my heart feel like they are failing. And I realized that I could walk towards this light and be with him. Or I could turn around and be in the darkness and alone. And that for sure is not where I wanted to be. The only place I wanted to be was in his hands and believe that all the promises in his word were true. So every day I chose again and again and again to trust him. And he gave us peace, peace beyond our understanding. And every step of the way, we saw how he provided exactly what we needed. And yes, she did end up having Down syndrome and she had multiple surgeries uh, within the first couple years of her life but he was with us and she is a joy that I could not imagine my life without. This path that looked so dark and unknown, I realize now is a path that I would never want to leave. And he showed me that our story, just our story of our family uh, is a small part of his bigger story. We all have a story to tell and it's all working together somehow for good. And it is amazing that we get to be um, instruments to show his glory. And that uh, I realize it's just such an honor for me to be able to say that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is coming. Because he is awesome and there is no one like our God. And he will prove it over and over and over. Yeah, thank you, Holly. Um, you know, it's just amazing her just sharing that experience. And I spent some time with Holly through those months and those difficult times. And this is just like a glimpse, you know, just a three minutes glimpse of the challenges that they've faced. Um, but it just is great that she has been able to share with us, um, you know, just a, a little bit of what they went through. And I know there were some conversations I had sometimes when they really didn't know what uh, Quinn's outcome would be. They actually didn't even know if Quinn would would, would survive. And just seeing, you know, Holly's faith through that and just recognizing that I'm going to give this to God. I'm going to give it to him nevertheless. And that's where that psalmist um, says, it's nevertheless, no matter um, what circumstances, uh, you know, I'm in, I'm going to choose a way forward. I'm going to choose a God-centered future um, forward. And as Holly found herself having to make a choice every day of, of responding to that, of responding to her, to her circumstances, we also have that choice every day to respond to our circumstances. How are we going to move forward? Are we going to move forward with really a God-centered future? And as we wrap up the Psalms and we take communion um, this evening, uh, it really is a time to remember um, all throughout the Psalms these last five weeks that intimacy that Lyle was sharing and that pouring out and that wrestling with God that we see over and over again um, with the psalmist and, and recognizing God just invites us into that and he invites us into um, that health of that relationship. And it's just um, funny tonight that after 37 years that I find out that my husband, what he always really, really wanted was emotional health. And all along, I thought it was something else. I just feel like it's a relief. 
Um, but, you know, deep down, I believe that's really truly what we all want, is we want that emotional health. And emotional health really a lot of times begins with remembering. And communion is a time for those who put their faith in Christ to remember. And even if you haven't put your faith in Christ, is it is a time to remember. It's a time to remember that uh, his body was pierced, his blood was shed, and he rose from the dead to create this relationship with him so that we don't have to walk through this life alone. And as Holly said, is we can become part, our little part, our little story can become part of a bigger story that God is putting together. And he invites us to become instruments in that. You know, one of my favorite Psalms, we didn't go over it um, during our series, but one of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 139. And in Psalm 139, the psalmist talks about knowing us. He talks about loving us. He talks about knowing our thoughts. He talks about even knowing the words that we speak before we speak them. He talks about knowing that he was there when we were formed in our mother's womb and that he knows the number of our days. And um, at the end of Psalm 139, the psalmist says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in their everlasting way. And as now we begin to prepare to take communion, um, for some of you, this is going to be just a time of connection, a time of joy, a time of remembering, a time of examination, maybe even a time of recommitment. For others, you know, today may be a big step in your journey. Maybe you're like, you know what? I don't have a God-centered future. I have a me-centered future. And maybe today is the day you go, you know what? From this day forward, no matter what's behind me, no matter what's today, I want my future to be just God-centered. I personally just really take this Psalm, Psalm 139, and I ask God, search me, know me, lead me, you know, and I take that time just to pause. And, you know, it's hard in this world to take time to pause, isn't it? It's hard to take time to stop and examine and to stop and remember the things that God does. But, you know, what? we're just going to take a moment to just to push the pause button tonight and just take a few moments um, in just the quietness of where you're at. Maybe you'll even use this psalm and ask God to search you and know you. So let's just take a few moments just to pause. know, on the night that Jesus was um, betrayed, he's the one who initiated communion or taking the cup and the bread. Um, and ever since then, his followers have followed in this tradition. <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians 11, it says, for I received from the Lord what I had passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So take the time, peel off the top of the plastic, and let's take the bread together. And the writer continues on, and he says, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's take the cup together. Let's pray. Father, we just, um, God, really do want to just thank you so much, God, just that you invite us in to this emotional health that happens, God, just through knowing the God who knows every single thing about us. There's nowhere we can go. There's nowhere we can hide. There's nothing that we can experience that you aren't a part of, God. And that, you know, as we walk through this life, we want to walk hand in hand with you. And God, no matter what the circumstances, whether they look good to us or they don't, God, we know that there is goodness in you in all that we experience. And we just praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand and join us as the band lead us in the goodness of God?
And all my days I've been held in your hands The moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing
And God, we're so grateful that your goodness does run after us. And God, as we wrap up this series that we've been in, it's been all about not just reflecting on your word and on your promises, God, but I think maybe the, the true intention of these songs was that they'd be written on our hearts, God. That they'd be more than just words, that they would be something that we could cling to and rely on in times of trouble. When things are good, when things are bad, when things don't turn out the way we thought, and God, so often they don't turn out the way we think. We have something to cling to. And your goodness and your mercy, God.
thank you so much that you are a God who offers to guide us and to lead us. We thank you that you can be found trustworthy in that leadership. And I pray for those of us who are in a spot where uh, where we know that in our heads, but sometimes we don't feel that in our hearts. God, that you would give this group of people endurance in following you and trusting you and clinging to you when it is very difficult to do that. When we look around and we see other things and we see other ways, God help us to place our trust in you in those times. And for those of us who are at a spot where we're not even sure if we want to follow you, God, I pray that you would give us greater and greater reasons to consider that and to consider what our lives would look like if we followed you. We thank you and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You guys can go ahead and grab a seat. Before we wind down, there's just a couple things that I uh, just wanted to, uh, to kind of go over quickly to mention. And the first is that uh, Connect card that I mentioned to you a little earlier on that we would love just to get from everybody. And so whether you fill it out on your program or the Terranova app, we'd love to get that from everybody before you, uh, you head out of here. And the other thing is for those of us who call Terranova home is we have the opportunity to, uh, to be able to give financially to support our mission of making God's love famous. And kind of where that comes from is just this recognition we have that, that everything that we have comes from God, that we didn't bring anything into this earth. And so everything we have comes from God. And he gives us the privilege to be stewards of that, to, to be the ones who look after that. And we just have this hope that we would be found responsible. We would found, be found generous. We'd be found with the type of people who just say, hey, God, we, we took what you gave us and we, we just sought to love well. And so for those of us who are part of the Terran of a community, uh, you can participate in that. We've got our envelopes within the program. You can also give online or on the Terran of app. And, uh, and the one last thing is, hey, as you're making your way out this evening, uh, we've got our guest services team members who've got baskets, and you can place everything in there, whether that's that offering envelope, uh, to connect cars, you want to recycle the programs, or anything else that you got, we would love to get that from you. Hey, this upcoming week, we've got our VBS happening here at Terranova, which we are so excited for. Our Supernova Kids team has done an amazing job preparing for that, and it's going to take place. So as it comes to your mind this week, maybe be praying for all the kids and all the leaders who are going to be here. And then make sure that you're back next weekend for the kickoff of our series, Got on Film. we got movie tickets. Bring a friend for that. And we're going to dive in to that series by looking at this classic film. I've seen worse. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Where's Buttercup? Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Buttercup is Mary Humperdinck, so all we have to do is get in, break up the wedding, steal the princess, make our escape. It doesn't leave much time for Dilly Danny. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Ha-ha, <laughs> you fool! Never go in against a Sicilian when death is on the line! <laughs> As you wish. All right, so that's next weekend. Be back for that. Bring a friend. Can't wait to see you there. Spoiler alert, it will be spoiled for you if you haven't seen it yet. Take care, everybody.